Good day everyone. My name is Professor Dave Friday from Macomb Community College and this is likely going to be the first Calc 1 video in a series of a lot of Calc 1 videos that you're going to see this semester. A question that should be posed by every single student who is taking calculus is what is calculus? Now another question that I would encourage you to ask frequently is why are we doing this? I think that too infrequently we start running through the motions of things, especially in an educational sense, and we don't pause to ask ourselves why do we actually do these things. So I'm going to give you an oversimplified version of calculus first. And the reason that you're getting the oversimplified version of calculus first is you learn a lot about calculus by actually going through the course and finding out all of these things. Calculus is going to be the first class where you really feel like you're starting to apply all of the things that you've learned in pre-algebra, algebra, trigonometry, geometry. It all sort of culminates in the calculus sequence. So the oversimplified answer to the question, what is calculus? It is the study of rates of change. Throughout the course of the semester, we're going to find... Um, uses that are exactly this and we're going to find uses that sort of play on this a bit. So notably there are two big ones that we're going to be talking about which is going to be average versus instantaneous. And to explain the difference between average rates of change and instantaneous rates of change I'd like to pose the following situation. Before I taught at Macomb Community College I taught at Grand Rapids Community College. Grand Rapids Community College is located in downtown Grand Rapids. It was great. I could walk to plenty of restaurants. So located in downtown Grand Rapids. I Google mapped it one time, and if I wanted to go from GRCC to MCC Center Campus, that is 150 miles away. Almost exactly 150 miles away. Now, I've driven it before. I have driven between Grand Rapids and Macomb Community College. And the drive takes, I'm going to say, about 2 hours and 30 minutes. So for the time being, we'll just say 2.5 hours. So a great algebra question to ask here is, what is my average speed. Now an average speed would also be known as an average rate of change. A speed is a rate of change. Anything with units that involve the word per, like miles per hour, that is a rate of change. Now average rate of speed comes to us from a formula from physics, and it's that your velocity is equal to your distance divided by time. Total distance traveled was 150 miles, Total time duration was 2.5 hours. If you're interested in grabbing a calculator for this, that's fine. But I will let you know that that means that my average trip, or my average speed during the trip, was 60 miles per hour. Now, what does that average speed actually tell you about my driving on the way there? Basically nothing. Let's say that I'm still on MCC's campus about to drive toward uh, downtown Grand Rapids. Am I going to be driving 60 miles an hour through the parking lots on campus? Absolutely not. That would be ridiculously irresponsible. What about when I hit uh, I-75 and I'm going up toward uh, Flint before I cut over I-69 to I-96? Am I going to be driving 60 miles an hour on I-75? Of course not. Speed limit's 70. And, well, everybody else is doing like 80 anyway, so don't worry about that. What about on Hall Road where the posted limit is 45 miles an hour and nobody would ever dare do 60 miles an hour on Hall Road every day? <clears throat> Don't worry about that. So if we were to, in a more mathematical sense, consider what that graph would look like over the course of two and a half hours. Here's my time. Here's my velocity. Here's 60 miles an hour. Here's one hour. Here's two hours. Here's 2.5 hours. So the average speed is letting me know that that is what my trip would have looked like 
had I just decided to do 60 miles an hour the entire time. But I can pretty much guarantee you that's not at all what the trip is going to look like. First off, I'm starting from a parked car, so I'll be doing zero miles an hour, but hopefully I'll be able to accelerate to, you know, a little bit faster and maybe retain that speed for a little while, and then I hop on a haul road, and then I get to do 45 for a while, and then then it goes up to 70, and then it stays at 70 for a while, and I'm, on, I'm doing 70 for a while, and then I get close to downtown Grand Rapids, and I get off the expressway, and I'm on the side streets, and then I actually get there and park my car. So the idea is, if that's what my speed is actually doing, then what is the significance of this average rate of change? Well, from the same formula up here, if you multiply a velocity times a time, you wind up getting a distance. What this is representative of is when you multiply a velocity times a time, what you're winding up with is the area underneath a curve. Very simple area formula of length times width, or in this case, time times velocity. And as it turns out, the area that you get under one of those curves is the same as the total area that you would get under the other curve. Finding rates of change is known as differential calculus. Finding area underneath curves and finding its significance is referred to as integral calculus. And hopefully, we've already seen that there is a strong connection between integral calculus and differential calculus just from this one picture here. So we'll get into the more mathematical stuff in future videos. This is just your introduction to some of the stuff that we'll be doing this semester.